thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I welcome this bill and would like to thank the member for Crawley for bringing this important piece of legislation forward. I particularly welcome the tabling of the bill as I believe it allows this place to debate the often difficult realities surrounding conservation. I personally find hunting distasteful. I am appalled whenever I see a hunter smiling gleefully next to their defensive prey, usually on their social media. I am at a loss, to be honest, as to why anyone would find enjoyment, even pleasure, from shooting magnificent I animals. Of course. Can I, I really do apologise to the House because I've spoke for too long, probably. These are not hunters. We've been generous by calling them hunters, and we continue around this House to call them hunters. Hunting that animal that can't get away is not hunting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, my yeah, right, my friend makes a, 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 a salient point. Um, but I think if, you know, if we are looking at shooting magnificent, magnificent animals such as rhinos, elephants, lions, um, and to even call it sport, I find yeah. abhorrent. So naturally, I welcome this bill and I see it as an opportunity to bring about a healthy debate on how we can best conserve endangered species while supporting the communities who are directly impacted. There is no question that we must do all we can to protect endangered species and improve biodiversity. I am proud of the work that this government is doing to protect the environment such as with the Nature Recovery Green Paper delivered by DEFRA earlier this year, which sets out this government's ambitions to restore nature and to halt the decline in species abundance by 2030. There is little debate over the fact that one of the primary reasons we have seen vast reductions in the numbers of animals in the wild, whether it's lions, elephants, zebras or even polar bears, it is due to human action. Whether it is destroying natural habitats to make way for farmland, polluting vital water sources, our actions leading to climate change, or of course the hunting of animals. In order for us to reverse this trend permanently, we need to work to make wildlife and conservation worthwhile for all stakeholders. Currently, there is no economic incentive for communities impacted by wildlife to accept the natural world that surrounds them. And I must stress that, this is, that it is wrong to suggest that trophy hunting is solely a problem in Africa. We must be careful not to, to be seen as hypocritical or even neo-colonial mm. when discussing our views on how foreign countries handle their wildlife. All around the world, there are examples where the environment and wildlife are sacrificed as governments have not provided incentives to local people to work with nature. Whether this is deforestation of the Amazon rainforest, the exploitation of waterways in Europe, or even the mass removal of hedgerows in the United Kingdom in the decades after the World War II. Something which I am glad to see is being slowly reversed by this government. Therefore, we must encourage governments who are fortunate enough to possess incredible swathes of nature to work with local communities to demonstrate that living near majestic wild animals does not need to adversely impact their ability to provide for their families. Done correctly, Communities which embrace their animal neighbours can flourish without compromising nature. I understand that this is an incredibly emotional subject, and as I said earlier, I abhor the thought of hunting for trophies. And I think it is equally important that we take a pragmatic and evidence-led approach to this issue, driven by data and experience and knowledge of those on the ground. The leading cause of the population decline in a whole host of animals across the world is not regulated hunting that we are discussing today, but actually illegal hunting, commonly referred to as poaching. I was interested to learn from the Save the Rhino uh, charity that between 2012 and 2017, an average of 83 white and three black rhinos were hunted each year, within the same period, an average of nearly 1,100 rhinos were poached yeah. each year. 
That means that only 7% of rhinos during this same period were killed by legal hunters. And I take my rhinoceros friend's uh, views on, uh, on the term legal hunters. And of the other 93% were cruelly killed by poachers for their own gain and without care for conservation and protection of the area. Would my of course. Uh, Would my honourable rec friend recognise that um, under the regime of Ian Suretsukama in Botswana, and because of the robust attitude that he took towards poaching, poaching was effectively eliminated. Um, in countries where, po where bright, um, trophy hunting is now permitted, effectively a blind eye is turned to poaching as well. My right yeah. friend for uh, Planet North, as, as ever, makes good points and I, and I absolutely take those but on board. wrong, will she give way? I will also give way. Unfortunately for my uh, honourable friends, the Save the Rhino gave the statistics that in 1968 South Africa allowed the hunting of rhinos. The population went from 1,800 in 1968 to 18,000 in 2018 with black rhinos going from 3,500 in 2004 to 5,500 in 2018. So her point was absolutely right. Uh, uh, thank you. And I think the point I am trying to make is I abhor any hunting for trophies, bringing those trophies back to this country. I have absolutely no reason why anybody would wish to do that. And what I'm saying is, in this whole debate, we have got to talk about conservation and what is so, what, what will play well with the local communities who, you know, rely on uh, the, the, the econ their local economies with trophy hunting. We've got to be able to support them, move away from reliance on trophy hunting. For example, in South Africa and Namibia, where according to Save the Rhino, rhino hunting is legal, there are now strict rotors and less than 1% of rhinos are allowed to be hunted to ensure that the activity does not threaten the longevity of the species. And in Namibia, the government has redirected efforts to create a programme of community-focused hunting which involves local people with protecting and caring for their local wildlife. Of course. I thank my honourable friend for giving way, and she's absolutely right to focus on what is happening in these other countries. As the honourable member moving the bill said, it is not for us to tell other people what to do. Um, but we, and our, the only, our own acceptability of these issues has clearly changed dramatically over time. But it's very clear here now, both through the polling and the government consultation, that the British public expect us to pass this bill today. And that is because of the instinctive revulsion that we all feel when we see these pictures of so-called hunters over the dead bodies of these majestic animals. That's why we need to get this bill passed today, not to tell other people what to do, but to show the leadership that there is a different way. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, my my, uh, my honourable my honor, uh, friend is absolutely right and that is the, the, the case I'm trying to make is that we must persuade people who think that hunting for trophies is a sport, is not, but at the same time we must remember that there are local communities at this moment who rely on that, and I use this term business very, very uh, lightly, um, and therefore with smart conservation, we have got to support those people who are living with this in places like South Africa, but not just in Southern Africa. Um, in the time I've got uh, left, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I really wanted to just make the point again that by marrying conservation of animals and the prosperity of local communities, we can make a lasting positive change. I doubt many would argue in this place that it is important to take into, into account smart conservation in order to mitigate any lost income for local communities who so dearly need the income that they at the moment receive from hunting. And when we discuss these issues we must realise that the people who are most impacted by this trade are local people. Members across the House are quite right to point out that the often barbaric activities of hunting wild animals, and I think we've been very clear today in this place. So Mr Deputy Speaker, I would hope that today's debate and the bill itself highlights the need for wider <coughs> discussions on smart conservation so that we can mitigate any lost income for local communities who clearly currently rely on the, uh, on the income they receive from hunting. The bill has helped to raise the whole issue of trophy hunting and I welcome its progress through this place.